Hello, this is Brad from Survival Comps, and today we're going to do the first video in a series of videos on extremely simple field expedient antennas that you can build out of materials that you probably have on hand. Now, I would encourage those of you watching this video series to purchase a few of these materials if you don't have them on hand and kind of build along as we go because this is going to help you sharpen your skills. You can have the most awesome fire extinguisher in the world at home. But when you're out in your boat offshore and your boat catches on fire, that awesome fire extinguisher at home isn't doing you much good. And it's the same thing with your radio equipment cache. You may have the most awesome radio equipment cache, but what you have on hand and what you can make work in the heat of the moment is what's going to decide whether or not your evolution is successful. Now these antennas will work on VHF, they'll work on UHF, they'll work on HF. This first antenna we're going to build represents kind of a worst case scenario antenna. And the only thing you're going to need for that is a section of RF cable with a connector hopefully so we can, you can test your antenna out. And it doesn't have to have a connector on the other end. And you know this is one of those antennas to be if you had to use television coaxial cable you certainly could do so. I'm not going to tell someone to go out and seek out television coax to build a lot of these antenna projects but you know what television coax will work and it will surprise you in many circumstances. It's just trying to put the RF connectors on there is a little more complicated. Along with this hank of coax cable you'll just need some cordage to hang your work and the tool you're going to need to construct this antenna is just a simple Leatherman tool. Before starting our project, we'll talk a little bit about antenna theory to assist us in the construction of this field expedient antenna. Easily the most important antenna formula for you to commit to memory is this simple formula above the line. 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz gives you one half wavelength in feet. It works for VHF, it works for UHF, it works for HF. And this is what you're going to use 90% of the time to construct a field expedient antenna if required and to troubleshoot all kinds of problems. If you need to know what a quarter wavelength is, just take that half wavelength and divide it by two. Now you got a quarter wavelength. If you need to know the result in inches, just multiply, for example, quarter wavelength, quarter wavelength in feet times 12 equals a quarter wavelength in inches. It's very simple to apply this formula. Commit this number and this formula to memory. Let's put this into a real-world context. You're out in your boat, you need to call SeaTo or the Coast Guard or whatever have you with your marine radio, but your antenna has been torn off and this is all that you're left with. So let's go ahead and make an antenna out of what's left of this feed line. Apply our formula to what we're working on. We know that marine channel 16 is 156.800 megahertz. So we'll go ahead and round that to 156. So, in doing that, we'll take 468 and divide it by 156. Now, if we doubled 156, we'd only have 312. So, let's see if 3 fits in here. And, let's see here. Yep, yeah, looks like it's going to be perfect. So, we end up, we're even. So, we're at 3 foot is 1 half of a wavelength at 156 megahertz. Now, 1.5 feet, if we divide 3 by 2, is what our answer is going to be there. So that will be 12 inches plus 6 inches, which would make for an 18 inch quarter wavelength. So we need to take what's left of our coaxial cable here, we need to measure back 18 inches. Now, what we can do is, I know that if I go from fingertip to fingertip and spread my arms all the way across from each other, that's 6 feet. So if I take that six foot point and fold back my damaged end of coax to here, now we know we have three feet. So we take the center of that and then we fold it back and now we have approximately 18 inches. And to make sure that that is true and correct, we happen to have a tape measure right here. And as you can see, we're almost right on the money on 18 inches. So we don't have the luxury of our toolbox, but we do have a Leatherman tool here, which is going to work just fine for what we're doing. We need to go ahead and start your line back here and cut your jacket away from your cable. Is we need to 
tank and we need to remove our outside insulation from our shield. We start to strip away our jacket now. And now that we've removed our jacket, what we can do is, is take our shield and lower our shield down and loosen it up like that. Bunching it up down here, kind of like a Chinese finger cuff. Now close our sharp blade on our Leatherman tool. And get out our small screwdriver or awl. And as far down as we can go here, we're going to want to make an opening in our cable or in our shield. And we're going to want to push our insulation back through. Until we can get enough to purchase on it. And here's our product. We have a field expedient dipole antenna right here that we can rig as a ground plane and in doing such we can effectively communicate. So our completed antenna here you can see is just essentially two quarter wavelength elements which makes up a rudimentary dipole antenna although this isn't what would be considered by a purist to be a true dipole antenna for all intents and purposes it is now for us to utilize this antenna effectively for the service we've created the antenna for which is the vhf marine band we're going to need to set this antenna up in a vertical orientation which almost makes it like a ground plane antenna which is another design we're going to talk about at a later point and the ground plane itself would have more elements, but it's still an antenna that does have some relationship to ground. Now for us to take and suspend this antenna or to hoist it, to use it, rather than just laying it on the deck or whatever, we're gonna need some cordage. Start by making a clove hitch. Tying a clove hitch is an excellent way to secure a line to an object for hoisting or to secure a line to an object in general. Here is our free end of our line run around the object cross underneath our standing end of the line and you'll see how it kind of makes a cross. What you want to do is, is you want to go between that cross and the object being secured just like that right there and here we have the clove hitch completed. looks like that and then take on your element and make a couple half hitches and again I've got a several videos doing this and I've got one on doing this to hoist antennas or tools now essentially when you hoist your antenna like this it's going to be vertically polarized and it's going to be secure enough so the antenna and the feed line itself are not going to drop down and here is our field expedient antenna in an oak tree tied up. Let's see what kind of match we get. And we can see that our match at the frequency of interest is doggone perfect almost. And sweeping from 144 megahertz to 165 megahertz, you can see exactly the resonant points of the antenna. Well, I feel like the emergency coaxial antenna was a good place to start for this series uh, because it's taught you how a quarter wavelength relates to the frequency of operation and how a half wavelength relates to a dipole antenna. We've also demonstrated how to strip coaxial cable, the components of coaxial cable. We've learned how to tie a clove hitch and two half hitches to support an antenna such as this. And I look forward to making more of this content for you. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.